hey, by the end of this video, you'll be able to tell the difference between ideal and non-ideal solutions and look at the two different types of non-ideal solutions that have positive and negative deviation and in extreme cases can also form azeotropes. What on earth is that? <laughs> Let's find out really quickly. So what's an ideal solution? Something that follows Raoult's law. Maybe you've already seen this in a different video. If you have not, we'll quickly write it down once again. What is Raoult's law? When you can talk about volatile components having pressures that only depend on their mole fractions and their solvents or solutes, pure vapor pressure. Yeah, that's what this P1 naught and P2 naught is. Please check out the other video about Raoult's law and ideal solutions if you want, if you have not already done so. And also, you can find out the values of these individual vapor pressures by multiplying them with the mole fraction in the vapor phase, which is Y, times the total pressure. Important inferences that we drew from this graph, it's a bit of a recap, that the total pressure always lies between the solvent and the solute, pure vapor pressures, and for the more volatile component, the mole fraction in the vapor phase is always going to be greater than the liquid phase. For the less volatile component, it's the other way around. If you don't remember what X and Y is, I'm going to write that down one more time. X is just the mole fraction in the liquid phase. And this right here, Y, is the mole fraction in the vapor phase. And can you quickly think about which one is the more volatile liquid here? It's clearly 2 because it has a higher vapor pressure than 1 in its pure state. Okay, with that quick recap, we've pretty much figured out what ideal solutions are. Something that obeys Raoult's law and all of this works out. Then what's a non-ideal solution? Simply put, it's something that does not follow Raoult's law. Okay, this is a bit obvious. So let's go into a little bit more details. When you mix two liquids, no heat should be evolved, no heat should be needed. That's why you say that delta H mixing is zero. Also, the volume of the liquids should not change before and after mixing. So you say delta V mixing is zero. If both of these conditions are followed, then you say that, hey, this is an ideal mixture of two liquids. Now, if either of these conditions are violated, which is delta H mixing is not zero, which means, oh, some heat was released or some heat was required for this solution to get mixed, or there is a change in volume, that also leads to it being a non-ideal solution. So let's take a couple of examples to see why this happens. This is a bit of theory, and maybe it's getting a little heavy on theory, but what's the reasoning behind this? Here are some examples. On your left, you have benzene plus toluene, marked as A and B mixing together, and N-hexane and N-heptane. These are supposed to be ideal solutions. On the right, you have ethanol and acetone, and chloroform and acetone, which are non-ideal solutions. Now, why is it that these are ideal, that's non-ideal? For definition-wise, Intermolecular attractive forces between AA and BB are almost the same as A and B. What is AA, BB? Well, between multiple molecules of benzene, which is A in this first case, whatever force of attraction exists, similar forces of attraction would exist even when toluene and benzene are mixed. That's all, that's all this is saying. Okay. All right. Let's take it as a statement of fact for now. And in this case, the forces are different. Ah, this is too much theory. I think let's draw the structures to see why is it that the forces would be equal or unequal or, you know, let's do that. Okay, so first example that's highlighted in yellow, benzene plus toluene. And on the right, you have ethanol plus acetone highlighted in blue. So benzene, as you know, is this awesome ring. Hexagons are bestagons. Toluene is the same ring with a CH3 methyl group attached to it. All right, what about ethanol and acetone? Right away, you see that there is an oxygen over here that has a couple of lone pair of electrons. And this guy also has lone pair of electrons. Do you think that has something to do with attraction? We'll see. Let's look at the next set, which is N-hexane and N-heptane. What is N? You take hexane and you draw its straight chained isomer. Similar thing with heptane. That's what is N-hexane and N-heptane. I've just drawn the line diagram for both of these. I can similarly do the... Uh, write, write down chloroform and acetone. Okay, I've drawn the structures. Does this help in any way to figure out why this is non-ideal? 
If you have studied this from some book or somewhere else, you already know what I'm going to do. But let's focus on the non-ideal ones. The ideal ones are okay. There was nothing before and there's nothing after. No forces, no extraordinary forces of attraction or repulsion or anything of that sort. So they, these are ideal solutions. But let's identify what makes this mixture non-ideal, which is CHCl3 and acetone, chloroform and isotone. So remember the electrons that I drew on oxygen? That's what's going to be interesting now. I've just drawn the same thing, but in a way to highlight what would disrupt the forces of attraction. Same thing here, A is ethanol, B is acetone. Hydrogen bonding could form once both of these are brought together and mixed. Because of that, delta H mixing is not equal to zero, delta V mixing is not equal to zero. What does that mean? Look, hydrogen bond, although it's not a real bond bond, but it's weak forces of attraction. If things come together, bonds are formed, energy is released. You already know this. So the energy release may be lower, but there is still some energy release when this happens as compared to a regular chemical bond. And because physically the molecules come together, the overall volume reduces. So I can then write that, okay, delta H mixing is not equal to zero, delta V mixing is not equal to zero. This solidifies these ideas. Also, the interactions, AB interactions are stronger. Why? Because of hydrogen bonding. All right. Because these interactions are stronger, the tendency to escape the solution and form vapors, that decreases. That's what I've got that in blue over here. What does that lead to? That leads to a reduction in vapor pressure. You see where I'm going with this, right? All of this is linked. Okay, let's bring that back that graph. And uh, I've got the ideal sort of solution with this dotted line over here. You'll notice that this line also is now dotted. So this is ideal. Stronger interactions, hydrogen bonding forms after A and B are mixed and all of that. Hmm, what happens in reality? What's the practical uh, aspect over here? Well, the pressures at every point are lower than what you expect. And because of that, the overall pressure is also lower that you see over here in this graph. This is the result of these stronger interactions. And because the pressure is lower everywhere, we say that there is a negative deviation from ideality. You see, that's why there's that big orange thing in the middle. All right. Delta H mixing is less than zero. Delta V mixing is less than zero. That's at the top right of your screen. I know the screen is crowded right now. But this summarizes everything. It does not follow Raoult's law. And how? In this exact way. If you don't remember what Raoult's law is, I strongly encourage you to check out the liquid-liquid solution video. Yeah, we've dealt with that in detail. Okay, this was one type of non-ideal solution. Let's look at the other example. You remember what that was? Alcohol and acetone. Let's bring that up here. Okay, ethanol specifically and acetone. Hmm. Now, here in this case, because I've got this molecule here, and I can have, I could have another molecule over here right? It is possible that there is some sort of hydrogen bonding between two molecules of ethanol itself, which means that some attractive forces existed that are being disrupted. Hydrogen bonding existed and by adding acetone to it, I'm disrupting that. Because of that, delta H mixing and delta V mixing are not going to be equal to zero. So in theory, I'm sort of breaking hydrogen bonds. So energy would be required for that. And well, I'm separating the close together ethanol molecules. So the volume would then increase. And this leads to weaker interactions between molecules of ethanol and acetone as compared to when they were separate by themselves. Now, because they have weaker interactions, it's easier for them to escape the solution and go to the vapor phase. So right here on the left, I've got increases escaping tendency of these molecules which then leads to an increase in vapor pressure. Awesome. So you know where this is going. I'm going to bring that graph again. And you can see on the top right part of my screen, I've written delta H mixing is greater than zero, delta V mixing is greater than zero. This is the ideal solution. The real solution will again come by the solid line. And at all points, the vapor pressure is higher than what it should be, leading to an overall increase in vapor pressure given by this orange line on top. Because the vapor pressure is higher than what you expect, 
this is known as positive deviation from ideality. That's it. And let's summarize both of these examples together. Yeah, extremely crowded screen, but it has everything you need in one place. Right? On the left hand side, you have positive deviation from ideality. An example given over here. What is happening here is that, oh, there are weaker interactions than they should be. So that means that this solution will also boil at lower temperatures than usual, right? If there are weaker interactions. If there are stronger interactions, negative deviation, like that of CHCl3 and CH3CO3, I moved on the right part of this screen, then there's a negative deviation from ideality, the vapor pressure reduces, and the boiling point would increase at all different compositions. Now, let's look at extreme cases of positive and negative deviations. Other examples. Okay. And all of these are not following Raoult's law clearly. Extreme cases. Examples. First such example is water and ethanol. Another example is acid and water. HNO3 and water specifically mixed together. Very interesting. This graph may or may not be in your book depending on what book you follow. But it's interesting to note that it boils at a constant temperature. That's the theory anyway of something called a minimum boiling azeotrope. That is sort of being shown in this graph itself. I know this is a little bit beyond the scope of what we are doing, but I want to just show this graph to you for both positive and negative deviation, extreme cases of positive and negative deviation. This is a pressure versus X graph. I could also draw a temperature versus X graph and it would have an exact opposite shape as compared to this. I'm going to just quickly draw that here. And this is a hypothetical graph, right? Would look something like that. And this point in this case and this point in this case would be that constant boiling point at which these mixtures boil. So on the left, you have the minimum boiling azeotrope. On the right, you have maximum boiling azeotrope. So this is where students get a little confused with all of this. Because look, all this time, we've been talking about pressure. We talk about positive deviation. But suddenly, we switch to boiling. And I've told you before, if something has high amount of deviation, positive deviation, then it would boil at a lower temperature. That is why we associate the word minimum with max with maximum positive deviation with this, because this right here, we're going to use that same color here. We're talking about pressure. Okay. And here in blue that I've written down, right here, this is temperature. Okay. This minimum and maximum boiling has to do with temperature. Let's get back to what is definitely in your syllabus. Yeah. Definitions of minimum and maximum boiling point azeotropes. These boil at a constant temperature. They have the exact same composition in the liquid and the vapor phase. That's what those curves were showing when they met at a certain point. If you'd like to study more about this, you're free to do so. But with this, we have completed the differences between ideal and non-ideal solutions. And I've also told you how minimum and maximum boiling point azeotropes work. They are extreme cases of positive and negative deviation from ideality. And remember, when we talk about deviation, we are talking about deviation in terms of pressure. But the boiling point is the exact opposite. If you have a positive deviation, then the boiling point will be lower. If you have a negative deviation, then the boiling point is going to be higher. And of course, all non-ideal solutions do not follow Raoult's law. That's why it's no longer a straight line that you're dealing with in those graphs and you have all these curves that come into the picture. 